Greetings. This is a video that's intended to show you how the wall board works, on which you'll be building some circuits during uh, during our day. So, what we have here is the wall board. Um, this is actually just one brand of uh, many types of uh, proto boards. They're called for prototyping electron electrical circuits. Um, the idea here is you have a whole bunch of support stuff around the edges here, and then the proto boards themselves in the in the middle. And we'll talk about each of these components. And the first thing you have to notice is that over here there's an on-off switch. Okay, this has a 120 volt AC cable coming in the back right over here, and um, and that means that there's uh, some active electronics inside. The active electronics inside includes some power supplies that will supply relative to this ground, which is connected to the chassis ground. DC levels of 5 volts, 12 volts, and minus 12 volts, which are convenient for doing um, analog, analog sort of low voltage electronics and digital low voltage electronics as well. So we generally power the circuits that we have on here from these power supplies if possible. We'll get to how, how to do that in a second. Okay? There's also an oscillator up here, a clock that generates a square wave clock that you can set the frequency of. So there's a thing here that clicks between 10 hertz, 100 hertz, kilohertz, and uh, and then you can vary it continuously, uh, you know, between those ranges using this dial right here. The clock outputs come out of these pegs right here, and I'll talk more about those in a second. There are some switches up here that are just for convenience in case you need a switch in your in your circuit, either a toggle switch or a push button switch to connect between this terminal and this terminal, say, when you push the button, or between this terminal and this terminal when you toggle in a certain direction. And uh, and over here there. There are a couple of just convenience um, uh, sort of uh, coax inputs that allow you to connect a coax cable conveniently to use the center conductor over here in your circuit somewhere. So let's talk about each of these in, uh, in uh, turn, starting over here. So first of all, these coax connectors, what you need to know about this is that the outer connector, the outer conductor here, is connected to the chassis ground of the protoboard. Okay. So the center conductor is the one whose voltage you can you know, send around or it can, it can vary around relative to this outer ground. And that is connected, and it's kind of indicated via this white line, to this little connector right here. And the way that works is that you push down on the red thing and you can insert a wire with, the, with a sort of bare end right here. And you can insert that on the side as you do that, and then you can let go, and it's clamped there. So now this wire is connected to the inside of the uh, coax. So you can use this, actually I should get a longer wire if I'm going to use this, you can use this to uh, to look at the clock for instance. So right now I've got that wire connected to the inside of this coax. I can connect this wire to the clock as well by doing the same thing over here. And now the clock is generating a voltage of on each of these things. They're tied together. They're, they're you know pretty much the same thing. And uh, they're, they're a little different in that one is down going, one's up going, but the, uh, the idea is the same, that the clock output comes on here relative to chassis ground, and now I'm sending it over here to the coax. So if I want to, I can plug in a coax connector here, and the center conductor of that coax connector is now connected up to my oscilloscope, and what I can see on the oscilloscope is that I've got a square wave. Okay, And we can change around the frequency of that square wave, say to a kilohertz, by just switching that dial over, and you'll see I have a faster square wave. I can slow, make that slower by just dialing around this knob right here, and you see that it gets a little bit slower, but not much. Let's actually go down here and you'll see the action a little better. Okay, we can make it a little bit faster by dialing it up. These are pretty coarse, all right, but, uh, but yeah, so that's the idea. So that's a convenient clock if you need it, um, but it only generates square waves, so if you need a sine wave clock, you're going to need to feed in a function generator, okay? All right, so we have some other things that you can use in similar ways. Um, you, you, you connect in, by the way, I should say, to the switches using the same push-button technology. There's another coax that you can use for convenience over on this side. And the other thing you, you may need to know about are these DC power supplies. Again, there's only one conduct conductor here in the banana. You can also screw up the banana and place a, uh, there's a little hole in there somewhere. If you can find the little hole, you can clamp down on a wire like this. So you can either use the banana or this little crimping to connect to the plus 12 supply relative to the chassis. 
Okay, so I think that covers everything around the edge of the proto of the protoboard. Now let's talk about the protoboard themselves. This is actually a common thing that you'll see, not just on these boards, but sometimes in the lab. You might uh, actually just take one of these off that you can buy off of this and use it to, to fabricate circuits. Okay, so the important thing to know about these is that they are designed so that you can plug in an integrated circuit chip, preferably with pin one up, so that you can plug it in here and you can have a way to access these pins and feed voltages in and read voltages off of the pins of this integrated circuit chip. The way this is done is that each of these pins here is now plugged into a certain hole and the ones to its side are actually electrically all connected to that same hole. So now I have a way, if I want to go in and access this pin, either feed a voltage in or read a voltage out or power it, I can feed that over to somewhere else. Oops, I just broke my wire and, and you get the idea that I can feed that in somewhere else and use it. Okay, so that's the idea. You can do that, of course, with integrated circuits. You can also do it with resistors, etc. Like this, so you can set up a resistor up there. And that gives you a way to just wire things in and out of that resistor, or you could take that resistor and put it between two pins if you wanted to on an IC. Okay. All right, so now, so each of these is connected to each of these. These five are connected, these five are connected, but none of these sets of fives are connected to each other, okay, so to give you a flexibility. The other feature you need to know about is these vertical ones right here. Often you'll need to feed power into ICs like this maybe ground in five volts, maybe you'll need 12 volts or something. And these give you a way of wiring in, say, plus 12 volts to a certain bus, it's called, here. So now I'm gonna have 12 volts, not, well, I mean, have to go down, some of these holes are actually hard to get the wire into. Um, so now I've got 12 volts not only on this hole, but on all these vertical ones running down here. There is no connection, it turns out, between the top set here and here, so we had to jumper over it. But once you have the jumper in, that voltage should be available all the way over here. So if you wanted to wire that into your IC, you could run a wire from here to whatever pin you wanted to run it to there. But you have to set those up explicitly. You have to put 12 volts on one of the vertical lines. You have to put 5 volts on it if you want. You have to put ground on it if you want. They're just there for convenience when you're using ICs. So I think that covers uh, most of what the proto board does and how to how to look at it. Um, I, I encourage you really should explore it a little bit and check things out with an ohmmeter just to make sure that you absolutely understand this um, and how these connections work, how the push buttons work, how the clock works, how all these voltages work, so that you can just use it in the future. And that's all for now.